Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Clark. I'm a, a professor at Montana State University in the library. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit more about a particular set of research where we're trying to think about how do you turn algorithmic experiences into forms of data. Um, so as far as what's ahead, I'm going to provide a little context for where this research started um, and what some of the absence, the, the, the bits of that research that were kind of unfinished to me and where you're going to understand or I'm going to show parts of where the next cycle uh, of this research are going. And it's really, um, as we started this research, we were thinking through how do you teach? How do you teach about algorithms and teach to all audiences? Um, from citizens, we're a land-grant university, um, so Montana citizens to students to researchers, kind of how do you how do you build an audience and how do you teach these sometimes these complex ideas to uh, all levels of learning? Um, in this particular session, I'm going to talk a bit more about algorithmic user experience, then pull pull through a potential auditing technique and talk a bit more about research implications. Um, so the initial research was funded by the IMLS. For us, that's our, kind of our primary granting agency. It's the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Um, the, the grant was really about um, looking at particular forms of user algorithmic user experience. Um, and as the it's sort of a, a teaching moment with algorithms is where we started. And what we did was things like finding ways to document what are the first principles of an algorithm? Like, how does a weighted graph network work in Facebook, hypothetically? Right? Um, and then we would, we would talk in, in, in workshops or in, in teaching settings, write pseudocode um, to, to just kind of get people thinking in in the code mindset and about how you, when you make decisions with a program, what that means. Uh, so th this, this work was really kind of focused on the pedagogy of the algorithm. And, you know, this, this is the type of, you know, in a, in a workshop setting, this is, this is the type of thing that worked well. It's just introducing a broad concept, giving people a chance to see how it might impact them materially. We did exercises with them. digital redlining, um, decisions we make, uh, insurance companies might make. Um, so there, there was just a, a lot of ways into this, this teaching space. But there was a component of this research that uh, was always a little, it felt unanswered to me. Um, there are these experiences that we have, whether it's uh, in TikTok, uh, whether it's in YouTube, on Instagram, um, primarily in social media is what I was thinking initially. Um, well, we're not really able to um, understand what exactly, how those, those, um, how those algorithms actually might manifest as a data point or as, as a data set. Um, and what, was, what, was, what I was struggling with was how do you think um, – how do you how do you start to quantify something like an algorithmic user experience, like the idea of the timeline in Facebook, or um, even the the Twitter timeline? So I wanted to start to answer like, what if they what if these things were a little more visible, or if we came up with a pattern, a set of pattern recognition, um, where we could actually say, okay, we captured a form of that user experience and encoded it as a kind of data set. Okay. So uh, in that initial research, we were able to kind of pull apart all kinds of experiences of algorithms. Um, if you think about the top one here, the masking, um, and this one's probably a little harder to quantify, and I don't, and this demo that I'm gonna show doesn't really talk about this, but. I, uh, the idea of masks, of the things we can, the filters we can put on ourselves inside of um, TikTok or Instagram, that's a form of an algorithmic user experience. Right? Um, lawyer cat uh, is, <laughs> is sort of the impact of, uh, of algorithmic user experience. Um, but again, how do you, how would you start to 
capture that experience as a data point. Um, and we don't have to go far. I mean, this is last week on Capitol Hill uh, for those of us in the uh, United States um, at Washington, D.C., uh, hearing related to how algorithms were working um, in social media. What was kind of interesting about this particular meeting or, or hearing was that uh, there were policymakers and uh, policy uh, analysts and academics talking about the role or the place of algorithms in these environments. Um, so for this initial cycle, uh, as, as the end of that, that first cycle of research was, was coming about, um, a group of us uh, that were still on the end of that grant, um, and those partners are Marielle Karinga, Julian Kapkanian, and Tyler Bass. These are uh, these were undergrads that were that kind of worked throughout the project um, to just just answer some of the questions about, that when we were talking through the first part about um, the kinds of uh, kinds of ways you might teach or introduce these these concepts. But one of the things we all settled on was an idea of the YouTube recommendation algorithm. Um, this is a little dated, the, it's from 2018, but the, the, the uh, time or the, the principle of it does still stand that a lot of the, the way that people are kept and moved through the YouTube ecosystem is through this recommendation engine. Um, so that seemed like a particularly, as far as a demo, a proof of concept for, for parts of this project were uh, really useful for us to think about. Um, and where we started, and this is a screenshot of um, an algebra query, a query for algebra um, with my, I, I'm the actual profile that, that it's using right now. Um, and if you look on the left, you can see from, it's quickly moving me from the query about algebra to various um, what I would say, what we what we classified um, as out of scope um, types of recommendations. So this was a way for us to kind of balance and analyze the um, the algorithm. But it's it's instructive because it, it kind of shows how quickly that recommendation engine moves from original query to different types of personalization. Um, I w am not interested in lumber prices, but there it was. So, um, so this case study uh, really was about how would you begin to audit this experience. Um, I mentioned Marielle, Julian, and Tyler uh, before, and before I leave this slide. Um, the thing that we, we started with, we wanted to try to use the API um, to kind of see how um, how recommendations were happening for particular uh, for particular um, videos and, and subject topics. Uh, but we realized that that without the um, simulation, I'm going to talk about this in a second, as far as the, the kind of processes you should follow if you want to start to do this. Um, those, and the YouTube, uh, let's go back. The Pew Research actually did, they, their YouTube recommendation algorithm study used only the API. And what we realized is that there's a real limitation there because without the kind of personalization and the web browsing, the browser experience, you don't, you don't fall into these rabbit holes that you see, um, like, like in this example, um, where, where it's trying to pull you out of scope. Um, so the first thing we had to do was think through how do you simulate a user? And so this was creating a user agent um, and particularly moving to web scraping and harvesting, not ABI data mining. Okay, so that's one of the, the first step. And one of the goals of this um, session is to just kind of introduce how you might start to do this. And again, we're at the kind of the early cycles of this. Um, so step one is move away from, even though those APIs are available, whether it's TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, you're not going to get the, um, the ability to understand actual 
algorithmic user experience or record it more importantly without using some kind of uh, first simulating a user in a profile. Step two is actually taking what you're seeing. So on that page, scraping, uh, identifying the, the initial um, video and then moving to understand and classify the recommendations on the left side of your, or sorry, right side of your screen right now. Um, and this was, this was um, there were certain uh, signals or tells in the recommendations that we used to start to classify good, good recommendations or out of scope recommendations or bad recommendations. Um, so things like all caps, <clears throat> in um in a title or in, in within you know if 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 a video is screaming at you there there are there chances that the quality wasn't as good that it was necessarily try might be pulling you out of scope from your original kind of intentional query um things like uh extra late like we could watch for hyperlinks in the actual description because those were also those tended to in terms of quality, those tended to be spammier videos and, and just ways that we could um, grade the or evaluate the actual um, the video itself. Um, and then anytime we moved, like we, we were able to sort of have an original query intent and understand it and, and, and kind of note when the subject was moving out of scope. Um, and then finally, this, uh, regardless, uh, of where um, parts of this, where the analysis ended up, the the last thing that we realized was necessary was a way to kind of capture and record what was there. And so that that step three for us and for anybody thinking uh, routinely about this kind of work uh, was to package that data data set for reuse. And we used. Um, the goal was because uh, those of you who I, I know this is a data focus group, um, they'll no, they'll inherently notice, uh, or uh, I would imagine you would notice that uh, web scraping and harvesting can be very brittle, right? Like uh, a, a front end design can change pretty quickly, and that the, that harvest of the title of the video is now in a different set of tags, and your script isn't working. Um, another reason to kind of Pull that, pull that together, and and make the recording of of what the algorithmic user experience was at that particular date and time. Um, and we followed the uh, jumping in to give you a five minute warning. We're going to go a couple minutes over since we okay. had some slow start. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Um, so we we followed some we wanted to look at uh, data set and data feeds as part of the schema.org um but the one that really caught us and uh really helped us was this way to package a source of data research data with with the metadata with the, with their metadata um this is the row, cake, row crate metadata specification um and if you if you're not aware of it, it's it's a really useful tool. You can kind of put a manifest together and embed even like procedures. So it has like behavioral metadata, like how you would run analysis on a particular data set as long and as well as the the data set itself. Um, so stepping back, when you think about this work, um, and I'll Again, we're at early cycles, and I, I'm ready for. Um, I think we're ready to, to think a little bit more about further fellowships or different kinds of ways of, of facilitating this kind of inquiry. Um, it's about finding that user agent and profile, mapping out your harvesting and data points, collecting and analyzing the data, and then encoding those results. Um, and there's lots, lots of implications here. Um, if there's one thing I want us to start thinking or taking away is like how do we how do we identify um, and record algorithms as a form of a da of data as data sets um, and I think the, the 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 ghost that was left from that last bit the first part of the research was how do we move behind naming and defining and kind of identifying an algorithm or algorithmic user experience to quantifying it. Okay. 
Um, a couple of notes. There's a code repository here. The um, all of the work of the of the research is there. There's the auditing tool or the very parts of parts of the script. Um, there's a small app that actually does some transparency work where you can actually run a run a search user experience and um, look at what's happening behind the scenes. And then there's curriculum, syllabus, and teaching resources as well. Fantastic. Um, oh, sorry. You go ahead. That's okay. I uh, just want to call out uh, three people. Uh, Lori Allen, Thomas Padilla for Collections as Data, if, you, if you're not aware of their work. Um, Sophia Noble, Algorithms of Oppression, was uh, inspirational for us. And then this group, The Markup, which is a new um, nonprofit newsroom that's doing a lot of this work about how do you um, not only report, but create data and analyze our technologies. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was really fascinating. I am, we've got maybe two minutes for questions and we have two questions in the chat. So let's go ahead and chat about them. Um, first, Megan asks, does algorithm equal user agent? In other words, are you using algorithms to measure an algorithm? <laughs> that is so meta. I love it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's much like the view <laughs> yeah. that people are getting right now. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't, I, would, I guess I wouldn't say user agent is a, um, is an algorithm, but uh, certainly the, the work of, um, I guess, of, of, creating that profile or of identifying that that profile is something that that feels algorithmic i suppose it's okay megan yeah, yeah that's good that's mm -hmm. good no apologies um so we have one more question from nikki who asks did you do anything like survival analysis with the recommendations i.e survival time to the rabbit hole um no that's a, that's a great you know, parts of that analysis um really sort of it was very binary kind of like is this a good one is this a bad one we just wanted to kind of get a start um but i feel like there's so much more um as far as the metrics and that uh putting it into a pandas data frame because I, I work in python so um and 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 building out a couple new fields to to kind of qualify the the um the uh the value, like the analysis of the algorithm itself. I'm, I'm kind of flashing back. The web scraper had things like we pulled the duration um, of the video, you know, just to see how long things were, if that could be an indicator. Um, but I'm, plenty, plenty more work to be done. And I'm, I'm yeah. excited to, to keep to keep kind of asking this question. 